Hi. Hello. Hi. We're here to interrogate you about everything you know. Yeah. Yep. Bring, bring it on. We'll we like talking everything about everything it. Yeah. So season two. No. Yeah. 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 What you have know you something? heard? Yeah. What is it? <laughs> what is the first episode going to be like? I wish we knew. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit about, um, in the first season, there's a lot of characters that you think in the first few episodes are going to, that it's going to be very black and white, that they're bad and these are good. Like, but throughout the season, you find that all the characters have different, there's a lot of gray. How is that to develop those characters and how important was that? The, you know, like that Lucas and Clay aren't all bad. Or they're bad. I mean, it's super important for us. I mean, even for Maddie's character, Henry, and everybody uh, gets more and more dimensionalized as the show goes on. And there's parts to Jenna that are surprising. That they really um, but yeah, that's, I mean, for us, it all starts with Ken. We, we had a, a, a rule when we started the show that came from Doug, which is like, if you stripped away all the superpowers, the teleportation, and action, and everything else, you still have, have to be able to watch a compelling show. Show. Like, mm -hmm. if we have to develop a show that can exist in this little town of Reston and, and be as interesting um, without the superpowers as well. So that was always, uh, you know, so it has to be about character. And that also com comes from our showrunner, Lauren, who we brought into the show after the pilot, and we knew how we were all on the same page when she came in and sat down to talk to us, and she said, for example, my first agenda is to, you know, show another side to Bill Moon, Bill Moon in the pilot. I'm really, I'm just a bad guy. And she was like, she's like, I want to bring out another side of town. And she really wanted to move all of the character stories forward. If you're going to do that, you're going to find the other characters. But it kind of started with Henry's character because, I mean, all along, you know, there was this idea that, like, what happens when you give a teenager a superpower? Like, I have two teenagers. There's some white ones over there, so it's down. But like, they don't make good decisions. Teenagers aren't like they often choose the wrong route. So like, what happens if you give somebody whose brain is not fully developed this awesome superpower? Uh, so that's something about moving forward. We really want to take more time to explore. I mean, in a lot of ways, bad decisions are kind of the linchpin of the show. For example, if Henry. When after the incident happened in the, in the pilot, when she just went to her mother and told her everything about what had happened, as far fetched as it was, probably none of the rest of the season. Or if she didn't go to the clay yeah. and ask help to steal her car, <laughs> which is a terrible <laughs> idea. <laughs> <laughs> none of this would have happened. But it made sense at the time. Or she wouldn't have gotten in the car with the dad after the both her sons right. like, exactly. did bad things. Lots yeah. of bad decisions. Yeah. All of these things make sense to teenagers. <laughs> right. yeah. When you were writing. Show. How did you deal with the sensitivity of the sexual assault? Because I thought it was handled really well without being over the top. And sometimes you see that. Yeah, that that all that credit goes to Lauren. Um, you know, because you know we had shot a pilot where the sexual assault scene existed. But um, you know, when Lauren came on board, she she pitched us this idea that you know she wanted to deepen the assault, and and she dimensionalized it. She made it happen more from Henry's point of view, and and to be honest, it became a, a, a lot more explicit. And then the idea was like not to leave it behind, let it carry through. And don't like it happened now. She can teleport. It's always going to have a presence. Like, for some, that all came from Laura, um, which you know at the time we hadn't thought of that when we made the pilot. But we actually went back and we shot material to put into the pilot so that it would feel you know, there's more honesty and more depth in the adventures. And Lauren did a lot of research. She she talked to some assault survivors and uh, to ask them about their experiences in the aftermath of their assault. And she brought a lot of that to how um, the character Henry sort of dealt with her own assault and how she thought about it. For example, the way she replays it in her head and wonders whether it could have been differently. Um, that came from first-hand accounts. Um, when you have, to piggyback off that, those certain dream sequences where it's more of the ideal situation that you wanted to happen to, will, to the point where as you're watching it throughout the season you start to wonder if what you saw the first time 
is actually what happened. That's kind of what I experienced. I was like, sure. okay, now I'm confused a little bit. But how do you how do you think that could play out with your audiences um, in a perspective, just dealing with these all these different interpretations of what you saw happen, and even questioning it after the fact from her first person perspective? Well, I think it's just honest. I mean, I think, you know, this is our intent as producers and filmmakers was that what you saw in the first episode was objectively what happened. I think it's okay that you start to wonder as you go on because I think that's the experience that the characters have. Well, and it makes you talk about it and, and explore it more, and that was part of the intention, too. So all those different perspectives make the audience keep talking and thinking about it just like you are. Mm -hmm. Like if there was one perspective, you would probably, you know, that's all you would know. If you see Clay's perspective, if you see the wish fulfillment version of it, you know, all those different perspectives keep you questioning and exploring. And, did, and you, did you ever feel weird about showing Clay's perspective and the way he tried to figure out if he actually violated her when questioning the friend and then his playback? Did you ever feel weird about showing that side? I, I think it's an accurate reflection of Clay's exploration of it because Clay has a different moral compass and a different sort of perspective and that that was to me that was the indicator of him like did it really happen the way she said it or or here's the way I thought I remember it happening and then he starts questioning himself and you know there's a heartbreaking scene with his father where you know he, he's realizing he really he, he did an awful thing and I don't think we could have gotten there without all those different explorations I think that's part of the conversation again around sexual assault is that people perpetrators like don't believe that they that they assaulted anybody mm -hmm. um, or don't and, want to believe and don't want and, and we have to be talking about that too if we're getting, you know and you know, having an honest conversation about it. I actually like that y'all put that in the show because I don't think enough shows show guys realizing that they've done something like that. So I like that actually. And I, this is like I just read this story in the New York Times yesterday unrelated, but there's some a soccer referee somewhere in the Midwest who's been video recording parents behaving badly on the sidelines and then posting them. And there's all these parents who are like seeing this and going, like, oh my God, did I really behave like that? And they're changing their behavior because it's so bad. There's eighth graders playing soccer or basketball and the parents are losing their minds and they don't realize it in the moment because there's this, you know. Well, they're also confronted with an objective exactly. truth, which, you know, just dealing with first person accounts don't always exist. But it made me think, when I was reading that, it made me think of our show a little bit, like all these different perspectives. Like, that can change your, your perception. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank, Thank you very much. much. One more time. Could I ask one? Yeah. Uh, we have to it, rotate right now. Sorry. Yeah. Thanks, guys. You can squeeze it out. <laughs> we'll see you for season two.